Hey everybody, so um, tonight's video is just going to be a um, brief overview of the nitrogen cycle or the cycle of the tank. Um, and your cycle is basically what keeps your water safe and free of dangerous toxins between your water changes. Um, so the first part of the cycle is the waste that fish produce. And this comes in the form of ammonia. Other things in your tank that also can contribute to um, the ammonia content of your water is any uneaten food or decaying plant matter. And ammonia is um, very dangerous for your fish. Um, it can cause external burns, which you'll see as black marks on the fish. Um, it can cause permanent gill damage um, and can eventually cause death. Um, and ammonia can build up very fast in small or overcrowded tanks and tanks without filters. And this is why having a filter is so important. Um, the cycle of the tank is um, driven by beneficial bacteria that live primarily in the filter media. And um, they basically take ammonia out of the water um, by using it as food. Um, so many people have been told that you can't do large water changes because you'll lose your cycle. Um, but this just really isn't true. Um, the beneficial bacteria that take care of ammonia in your tank um, actually require you know, a surface to colonize. So while there may be some free-floating bacteria in your water, the majority of it's going to grow in your filter media. Um, and for those of you that have gravel, the gravel will also contain a certain amount of beneficial bacteria, but the majority of it will still be in the filter because um, these bacteria thrive in a highly oxygenated environment, which is um, you know, created by the water constantly running over the filter media. So the filter is really an ideal environment for um, these bacteria to grow. So there are two types of beneficial bacteria that make up the nitrogen cycle. Um, the first is the um, nitrosomona bacteria. And um, this bacteria takes ammonia in the water and uses it, um, basically uses it as food. And in this process, um, the bacteria produce nitrite as a byproduct. Um, so now instead of having toxic ammonia in your tank, you have nitrite, which is unfortunately also toxic to your fish. Um, nitrite can affect the blood of fish in such a way that the blood is no longer able to carry oxygen effectively and um, this can eventually lead to suffocation of the fish um, and you'll see your fish um, gulping for air at the surface or just generally being um, listless, bottom sitting, that sort of thing. Um, and the second bacteria that's important to the cycle is um, the nitrobacter bacteria and this beneficial bacteria takes the nitrite that um, the nitrosomona bacteria just produced and it takes that nitrite in the water and converts it into nitrate. And nitrate is the least harmful to your fish out of um, ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. Um, fish can tolerate certain levels of nitrate in the water, um, but high levels of nitrate will cause stress to the fish, which can lower their immunity and this will leave them susceptible to getting sick. And then very high levels um, can lead to acute nitrate poisoning, which can be fatal for your fish. Um, so in a fully cycled tank, you should have a reading of um, zero ppm, that's parts per million, of ammonia, zero nitrite, and some reading of nitrate. Um, although in a heavily planted tank, you may not get a reading of nitrate, um, but it requires a lot of plants to do that. Um, so you have zero ammonia, zero nitrite, and you know you have like five or ten nitrate, that sort of thing. Um, and so this is one of the reasons that um, regular big water changes are so important in your tank. Um, water changes are the best way to remove nitrates from the tank. Um, and I've talked about this before in another video, but I personally recommend doing 50 to 80 percent water changes weekly. Um, and how often and how big of water changes you need to do to keep the water safe for your fish will um, depend on several factors, including how heavily or lightly stocked you are. But um, a minimum of 50% water change weekly is just a good rule of thumb to go by. Um, and testing your water is the best way to figure out when you need to do a water change and how much you need to change. So beyond regular water changes, live plants in your aquarium can really help in reducing nitrates as well. Um, but you really have to have a pretty heavily planted tank to um, soak up a lot of nitrates. Um, 
So just to review quickly, um, your fish produce ammonia, ammonia gets converted to nitrite, and nitrite gets converted into nitrate. Um, in a brand new tank and a brand new filter, a cycle, a full cycle can take anywhere between um, four weeks and three months to establish, and this is because the beneficial bacteria need um, time to grow and time to reproduce. And this is why it's so important to test your water daily um, when you have a new tank and you know you can think of new as under three months old um, and this is because ammonia and nitrite can build up really fast in an uncycled tank so the weekly water changes won't be enough to keep your um, tank safe for your fish you'll likely need to do large 50 to 80 percent water changes every day to every other day um, while your tank is cycling um, but testing your water, again, is the best way to figure this out. So if you don't have a test kit, definitely invest in one. It's, um, it's just one of the best tools that you can have as um, somebody who's keeping fish and want to keep your fish alive, <laughs> which I hope you all want to keep your fish alive. So there's just a couple last things that I want to talk about in terms of cycling. Um, and the first is that there's a lot of products out there that will claim to instantly cycle your tank. Please do not believe these claims. Um, no product in a bottle will instantly cycle your tank, unfortunately. That would be great. Um, the products can potentially help the bacteria to begin colonizing the filter, but even this is hit or miss. Um, I myself had some limited success with Nutrifin Cycle when I was cycling my tank, and I know um, other people who have also had some success with that product, but you just really can't rely on a bottled bacteria to work. Um, a closed bottle really doesn't create an ideal living environment for the bacteria, and there's no guarantee that the company is even packaging the correct type of bacteria. Um, so yeah, cycling products, bleh. I, I think they're kind of a waste of money. Um, if you have the extra money laying around and you want to try it, it's not going to hurt anything, but I don't know. I'm skeptical. <laughs> um, and then the last thing that I just want to touch on is that when people think of cycling, they often think of cycling with fish, um, which is pretty dangerous and stressful for your fish, and it's a lot more work for you because you have to worry about keeping the water parameters safe and you have to worry about doing daily water changes. Um, so I just want to briefly touch on the alternatives to cycling with fish. Um, and the first is obtaining cycled filter media from an established tank and putting that into your filter. Um, using some established filter media to seed your filter will um, create a nearly instant cycle. You'll still have to test your water. Um, you know, regularly for the first couple weeks just to make sure that the um, bacteria are colonizing and taking hold and are able to handle your bio load, but generally using um, established media is a really great way to um, cycle your tank. Um, but you only want to do this if you can fully trust the tank that the media came from. Um, you want to make sure that that tank has been well cared for and that there's been no sickness or you know, parasites or anything like that in the tank. Um, so only use it if you really trust the source. And then the, um, the second way to cycle a tank that I highly recommend is a fishless cycle. And in a fishless cycle, you're basically running your tank without any fish and you're adding pure ammonia to the water, which um, will simulate a fish being there. It simulates the waste that they produce um, and the fishless cycle is how I cycled my tank, and it's really great because you don't have to worry about doing daily water changes or killing your fish, which is, you know, it's always good when you don't kill your fish. I try to strive for that generally. Hope others would too. Um, and the fishless cycle can actually be a shorter cycle um, than cycling with fish because you can actually allow the ammonia and nitrite which feed the bacteria to build up in your tank a little bit more than you can when you are cycling with fish. So it's um, it's something to think about. So that's the cycle of the tank. Um, please let me know if you guys have any questions, comments, or corrections to any information that I provided here. Um, I'm planning to do a video on fishless cycling at some point um, so that I can go a little bit more in depth on that subject, but 
if you're interested in it, you should definitely Google it. Um, there's tons of information on the internet about how to do it. Um, you can feel free to contact me if you're interested in learning more about it. I'll happily try to give you some information. Um, and thanks so much for watching. Um, oh, before I go, for any of you that might want an update on Puff, here he is. Um, he's doing a lot better. You can see he's kind of swimming around now. Um, but you can see that on his when there, um, oh, if he'd turn the other way, um, he's got a little bit of a bacterial spot on his when. Um, it is red underneath. You can't tell very well by um, because of his coloring, but yeah, you can see it right there. Um, so that's the last thing that I'm kind of worried about with him. Um, He's on Metro Meds right now, which is an antibiotic um, medicated food, and that has helped a ton. So I think that there was something internal going on just based on um, how he's acting now compared to how he was acting before he started on the medicated food. Um, I've also raised up the tank water level a bit. Um, it's maybe about 50% right now, a little bit more. Um, and his swim bladder problems have decreased significantly from a couple weeks ago. Um, he's still a little floaty, and I think he always will be, but um, he's looking a lot better. And um, the tank is also salted right now to 0.3%, um, and that's kind of to uh, help out with the, um, you know, the bacterial spot on his wen, and then also um, the fluid around his eyes, which hasn't totally gone away yet. So yeah, that's how he's doing. He's doing pretty good. I'm not feeling so worried about him these days. So hopefully he'll make a full recovery pretty soon here and he can go back in the main tank with Edie. Okay, well thanks so much um, again for watching and subscribing and um, hopefully I'll get another video done this weekend.